Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Thingbox. Now Thingbox was a crowdfunded idea and what it is is a security box that's going to plug directly into your network and let you know who's there on a real-time basis. And it works with the app which I've been using for years called Thing. So of course, after using their app for quite a long time, I was more than happy to donate to their crowdfunding campaign. Their crowdfunding campaign ended up being 1,744% funded December last year, and I received the product in October this year, so it's not too bad of a timescale. It's a little bit later than they had planned. And the box actually arrived like this, so it was very professionally packaged, and I'm just getting into it now. And it actually came in an Amazon box, which is interesting. But this is the box itself. This is very, very small, a little round thing. It's completely solid on the top and it's got this little rubber case around here so this is what the box actually sits in when we take this piece of cardboard out and the box will actually sit inside this to keep things tidy but not that way up the other way up this way now the rest of the stuff in the box we have a quick start guide first so let's have a quick look inside of how we first set this up so to prepare your thing box, you put it into the blue thing I've already shown you. There is a power adapter included in the box we haven't unpacked yet, as well as another network cable inside. So we feed them through the blue thing and then we feed them into the box to power it and to give it network access. So underneath all of this is the power supply, which includes every which socket you could ever think of, the EU, UK, US, it's all going to be in there so you're going to have no issue using this in your country. As well as a flat network cable and then the actual power supply itself. Mine came with the US plug already fitted, but to change it over, you press down on the button here and you twist, and then you add the one you're going to be needing. So obviously I need the UK one, and we click in place. Make sure it's secure, and we're ready to go. So to connect it up, you want to feed your power and network cables through the blue case first, and then plug them into the thing box. Feed them back through and slowly slide it in like so. Next, load up the app on your iOS or Android device. In this case, I'm going to be using Android. And we press the Thingbox button and we look for our Thingbox. Make sure it's powered on and been on for a little bit of while, maybe about a minute. And then it will find the Thingbox automatically and you can start configuring it. So the first thing it wants to know is where it is so it can sync up its time. So I'm going to press use my location and take it off screen. And now it's all set up and ready to use. My Thingbox is active and we have a wide range of tools available to us. So let's start off with a quick internet speed, see what sort of speed I can get. Now I actually have a full gigabit up and down where I live and it doesn't seem to be pulling the whole amount. I've never got this above say 700 down uh, and 400 up. This could be a limitation of the box or it could be a limitation of the service it's actually using. So I'm happy to give it the benefit of the doubt in this case. And in reality, not many people are going to have the gigabit connections. The box itself is actually very expressive with its lights. It has a lot of patterns it throws out so you know exactly when it's doing something. And it sits mostly like this and you can dim the LEDs quite thankfully because they are very, very bright. Now we'll explore the additional functionality it gives the Thing app. Before, it just scanned the network and told you who was there. Now this opens up a whole range of options. What we're doing at the moment is we're testing the Wi-Fi speed. So I'm walking around my flat and testing the speed back to the box. So it tries to run a 100 meg test be between the two devices. And if I move to a Wi-Fi dead zone, that would drop. Now I can do a bandwidth analysis. So what this does is it monitors particular devices. It's not going to see a whole lot to begin with, but if we leave it running for a little while, we'll see how much bandwidth that particular device is doing. So if we have it on a network with a lot of other people, we can actually see who's hogging all the bandwidth, which is a very useful tool, especially if you're sharing your internet connection with other people. The next feature we're going to look at is digital fence. And what this is, is it's monitoring who is coming near your Wi-Fi network. So it's picked up all of these devices which have come near my network. These are all the devices in my network right now. And the Wi-Fi stations near my Wi-Fi. This is a feature they're going to expand, but what it'll let you do is see who keeps coming near your Wi-Fi network and at what times of day. At some point they're going to be adding a timeline to this. There's been a very recent email update about it, which I very much look forward to. What you can also do is add people to your network, so you can add a contact to it and assign devices. So for example, this is my iPad, which we could assign to a particular user. And we have device specific controls as well to block device, pause device and the event log. It has an option to alert me when a state changes, as well as telling me the IP and MAC address. Now this is the internet options, so we can actually label the network at this point. We can see how many devices are online. We can see the internet speed, the gateway, the IP addresses, as well as MAC addresses 
and it'll tell me a little bit more about the network. So I can have a look at who's online right now, and I can actually share reports about this network. So if I sync all the names and icons from my other networks, which I've managed with Thing, I can actually export a report to CSV, HTML, and everything, and open it up in Chrome to have a real-time look at what my network looks like, which is a very, very fantastic feature, giving me names, IP addresses, and MAC addresses. So far, this has been a network administrator's dream. It's perfect for a home or a small office, and it tells you exactly who's there. You can adjust the light on the top with the slider as shown here, and you can set to alert on new device, so you'll always know if someone else is there. And the best bit, it hardly uses any power at all. 3.1 watt, and it doesn't get very warm either. It's something that could absolutely sit in a cupboard or on a shelf somewhere, and you barely notice it. But it keeps your network safe. It is a security box after all. So this is a look at some of the alerts it sends you. So it's telling me a device is going up and down here. This is what the email looks like. It tells me the device, the IP, and when it went down, so I know when it's gone. So in terms of network security, Thingbox does market itself as a security device, let's not forget. So it isn't just monitoring who's on the network, but it's monitoring how the network's being used. So someone has already posted that they used Kali Nethunter to launch a man-in-the-middle attack, and Thingbox was able to pick up on it. And development against these attacks is continuing. They've recently put in a patch against the recent crack attack on Wi-Fi, and there is an ongoing roadmap which they are actually kind enough to share with everyone, including an update to the digital fence so you can see a timeline. So in my opinion, Thing have actually created a fantastic product in their Thing box, and it's something that I will continue to use. It's not just bought for this video, I actually do use it on my network. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching, guys.